Happy Monday, y'all, and welcome back to another episode of the Daily BM. On this episode, we have a very special guest, Alyssa Grishiva. She is a licensed therapist, and she also works with holistic medicine and spirituality. It's a fantastic episode. I hope you enjoy it. I know I did recording it, so we look forward to the feedback. Remember to like and subscribe, and let's go. Hey, good morning, fuckers, and welcome to another technical day and technical issues at the Daily BM. I have Mike in the house with me. What's going on, brother? See, they'd have never known that if you hadn't started the show like that. Yeah, well, you know, hey. We weren't here for the last one. Everybody knows what screw up we are at times, right? So (laughs) should I say me? I'll just just claim that one. Me. I'm the screw up. You didn't sound like your normal, happy, go-lucky self. You sounded tinny and, you know, robot man. So So I sound like normal days. Gotcha. (laughs) Cool. (laughs) So the crowd's used to. (laughs) <laughs> exactly they're used to this sexy uh, you know manly voice coming yeah. through the microphone a lot yeah. of filters a lot of filters <laughs> yeah it's kind of like I'm, I'm like the instagram of audio you know what i mean it's like filter city you know nothing makes yeah. me look good i have a face for radio for sure um <laughs> that being said yeah. um we have a special guest with us today Alyssa yes, uh, grashiva right yes that's correct Yay. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> Nailed it. Congratulations. She is a licensed mental health counselor, and we're going to be talking about men's mental health today. So before we jump in with you, I, Mike, I want to tell you something really uh, how much of a dumbass I am from this weekend. <laughs> so just real quick, I'm the biggest dumbass. I literally went to the gym, right? And I haven't oh. done deadlifts in forever. Okay. So I go and uh, – Go load up the weights to do the list. And I'm like, man, this is really heavy today. I was like, man, God, what is wrong with me? Am I like, you know, super weak today? Am I just, did I not eat enough protein? Did I not, you know, whatever. Did I not take an energy, you know, supplement to get myself going? Put that stuff on there, man. I get through four sets and I'm going, I can't finish the last rep on my fourth set. And I'm going, damn, man. So I'm like Googling because I'm like, okay, this says it's only 50 pounds plus the 20. So that should be like 125 pounds, right? I did not realize that the weights in a deadlift are done in kilograms. Well, <laughs> she said, Elizabeth's not, over here laughing. It's not, it's not, it's not just deadlifts. I mean, that's just a different, that's just a listen to me. Weights. Listen to me. Every other weight in the damn gym has got pounds on it. 45 pounds, 10 pounds, five pounds, two and a half pounds. Why the hell they think it's a need to put deadlifts into kilograms? I have no earthly idea of why. Oh. So that's the next thing I'm going to Google is why is that necessary? Maybe because it's for of the competitions. Rest of the world, so the rest of the world uses the metric system and we're the only ones that are different hey, we're in america <laughs> put it in pounds that's all i'm gonna say that's all i'm gonna say about that so in other words instead of doing like 150 pounds like i thought i was going to be doing i was doing uh 230 pounds so so so, yeah. so half your bo- half your body weight <laughs> <laughs> pretty much pretty much see this is why men have he- uh, mental health issues right here because of friends like him that's all i'm gonna oh. say right there gives me a complex yeah, you're yeah. taking care of that, though. You're in the gym, so that's a big part that's of it. What, yeah. yeah, that's, that's true. We do. <laughs> that's what we do, for sure. That's what mm-hmm. we do. <sighs> so, Mikey, um, let's kick her off, man. Let's let's talk about some men's mental health issues, man. Well, I, yeah, I mean, we could, we could start, um, you know, I guess on the impact of exercise and sunlight uh, before we get into some of the other um, mm-hmm. things that you actually specialize in, which is a – the sound healing and the energy works and the spiritual guidance and stuff like that. Um, just how much getting out in daylight makes a difference as far as your mental health. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Think what are your thoughts only, on that? Not only the daylight, I think sun is of course, and it's been already proven by so many different practitioners as well, how important getting some vitamin D is right. Especially when it's in a natural form. Um, again, being in Florida, sometimes it's complicated when people spend too much time out that can be actually causing some other yeah. irre- like irreversible effects. However, again, mm-hmm. it's important to be out with not only taking sun or sunbathing, but also maybe connecting with nature, you know, mm-hmm. going out and getting fresh air, getting out of our comfort zone, so to say, that can be actually a, a big trap if we think about it, because we, you know, people like to function in this little cycle. We do the same thing every day. So if we break that routine a little bit and get ourselves out of the apartments or the offices or places like this, we can actually get a lot of new perspectives on things. So again, when we're in the same place, we get the same kind of thoughts. You know, listen, it's funny you say that because one thing I started like incorporating into my day is taking about 10 to 15 minutes and I go stand outside in the sun and I 
and I think Mike's going to make fun of me for this, but I literally take my shoes off and I go yeah. walk through the grass and I walk yeah. through the grass in my backyard. And I mean, it, it does give me a little sense of clarity every day. And I get, feel like I'm getting that vitamin D because that's 10 or 15 minutes. It's not overexposure yeah. living in Florida myself, you know, connection to the earth. Yeah. so it's just yeah. connection with nature. I feel when I'm out there I, listening for the birds, the trees. For sure. How do you get to take your shoes off? What kind of brought you doing that? You know, you know, it's funny. I just, I, this goes back to my childhood. I, I mean, my mom used to make fun of me all the time because she'd be like, would you put some shoes on? Because I always would go everywhere with no shoes on. But then it was like, I don't know. It was just something about like the coldness of the grass when you're putting your feet on it, you know, and then you're just, okay. and it just, you know, yeah. and it just it brings that whole feeling over you. So it was yeah. just kind of like getting away from wearing like either dress shoes or just regular shoes and saying, okay, I'm just going barefoot for 10 or 15 yeah. minutes that I throw my shoes back on. So you haven't, you, you, you don't know the science behind it. There's there is science no science behind it, except no, for, you, you, I, don't, I, you I, don't, you don't know, you don't know the science. There is science behind yeah, it. There no, is, there, there, okay, gonna so you. You're going to have to tell me the science behind yeah. this. You can yeah. actually measure your electric pulse. Cause we all have the energy kind of signals. Mm. If we try to measure it with different devices, like even light detector tests, right? What it does, mm. it's, it's, it looks how we kind of move internally. So when we take the shoes off, if you measure yourself, where they have this little, I'm not sure what they call, but they're measuring the electricity within. EMF. If you put it, EMF, yeah, right. Thank mm-hmm. you. The EMF, if you put it on your legs, let's say, or somewhere in your body while you have shoes on and measure it, and when you take it off and you put and you ground down into the soil, it actually your electric impulse rises significantly, like significantly. <laughs> and you can look at it, you can find um, different experiments on YouTube. There are a lot of them available. Just put connecting or measuring your electricity with your shoes and without your shoes. And there are multiple things that you can watch. So it's very recharging. It's actually giving us more energy and it's taking away, draining out all of the toxins, excesses. There was also a study where a lady who lived, she was very segregated from the community and she lived in the forest and she started doing a lot of planting foods and growing her own foods and you know vegetables. And she said that if we walk on our soil, if we have a piece of soil and we walk and we plant different foods, the earth actually understands through the connection with our feet. It understands what kind of diseases we have. And then it it sends proper nutrition to the vegetables and fruits we get. So they will actually be altered to supplement us with whatever we're missing. And it's a magical thing. So yes, connection with nature, it's not only mentally, it's good for us mentally, but it's also good for us physically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Cause I mean, you know, it's, it's crazy. Cause I literally just started implementing this this year. I, I literally will outside and I get some time now, Mike and I both, we, we do ice plunges. So, you know, when we get out of the ice plunge in the mornings, I, I don't know about Mike, I don't know how long he stays out there, but I like go out there and kind of like wait for the sun to bring my body temperature back up a little bit. Mike, do you do the same thing in the mornings? I never actually asked you that. I mean, I know we've like, so, so typically how I start my morning is, is I get up and I do my, um, like a little over a mile and a half walk every morning in the sunlight. Um, and then I come back and then I hop in the cold plunge and then I get out and walk around and I, I do let my body come up natural temperature. I don't do like uh, a shower or anything of that nature. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't do my walking in the grass until like the afternoon. That's when I like afternoon break. Yep. Um, Cause that, that seems to work best for me. Uh, I'll tell you, it's funny. Cause like, you know, there's a lot, a lot of credibility was given to that, that whole, what you just said. Like, there's a lot of people that will hear that be like, oh, that's just a lot of like spiritual mumbo jumbo, you know, words like mm-hmm. that. But as our technology is getting better, you can actually see, you know, using devices like EMF, like how much things share energy. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, like a person's heart is 60 times greater with EMF frequencies than their brain. So you can actually feel someone's emotions up to three feet away. And that's scientifically proven with through yeah. EMF. Mm-hmm. If you have negative energy, people can feel it three feet away. That's why you can walk in a room and say that person feels off because they actually are emitting an EMF frequency that's off, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which is wild. I mean, it's because you're not resonating. So that's and it's also a really fascinating field. Our own things that how we are sensing into people too. We have to recognize mm-hmm. when people talk about spirituality, you don't have to believe in anything. Well, spiritual mumble jumble, we're not talking about you have to go there and you have to practice that, right? But it's understanding that something is in all of us running through this machine right now that's keeping us alive. And one day it's not going to be here. So what is that? <laughs> Who is right. controlling even the thoughts we have? So it, I feel like it's a little 
ignorant to say that, okay, there's nothing there completely because something is there, whether mm -hmm. it can be oh, yeah. improved with science or not. And I feel like understanding that we have much more, when we talk about intuition and instinct, before we were always going for the instinct, right? Well, I, my instinct right. is telling me that, right? And we're talking about the stomach and for real, in mm -hmm. our stomach, we have the second brain, the bottom brain, so to say, mm -hmm. and in our hearts, right? That come up, or that creates our nervous system. And I feel like understanding that, like you've said, um, that walking, you just started walking barefoot, right? So something there brought you to this impulse and that's the intelligence of your body too, intelligence of that energy. We're one, a cool, complete system and we try to, to heal one thing with a doctor, another thing at the church, another thing with mental health. We're one system and we have the answers inside. We're just not listening. So sometimes mm -hmm. when we start to listen, okay, what do I want to do? Ah, you know what? I want to take my shoes off, and especially as kids right? Kids have that intelligence. We don't right now because we're so conditioned and we get the, the knowledge and the wisdom that comes from that and from our within, from us being children, right? We forget those ways and they're so important. Yeah, I think you made a good point about that too. It's like, you know, as children, you know, we're just still in that innocence phase. And then as we grow older, we do become conditioned and we, we get told by outside sources that we have to be a certain way. And, and we live that day to day versus, you know, uh, taking that same childlike mentality and applying it to our days as adults. Okay. And uh, so you, it's a valid point because, you know, I started doing that. And my, I know Mike will probably say you're always a child, but uh, <laughs> no, I, <laughs> I, 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 wait, I actually embrace that. Up. No, I but actually embrace that. Like, I feel like that, you know, I always like, uh, we're part of like a men's group. Um, and I always preach to the guys in there. I was like, always embrace your inner child. Like, don't lose that because it's the creativity. Like, you know, everybody has that one friend that, you know, they approach life with everything like awe and amazement. You know, you'll be driving mm -hmm. down the road and they'll be like, oh my God, do you see that? We need to stop and get out and look at it. Like, you know, that type of mindset. And I was like, if you can have that in life, like that's the greatest joy right there because yeah. it doesn't, it doesn't cost anything to have that type of mindset and just to how be how to get there how do you get there? To, that's yeah. the question yeah and for that we need to acknowledge the power of our minds and we're mm -hmm. so entangled with that we're so entangled with everything we get so overstimulated by everything right now so it's very hard to get out of that space and not to think that we are so attached to that mentality and more 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 not enough let's keep going i have to get more you know it's it's a cycle and so get out of that and get that curiosity and we have to really dedicate time to acknowledge and learn about ourselves, learn about what's going on internally. And that's not, not a lot of people would want to do that because it's so, it sounds so vague, but in reality, that's the greatest power there is to be able to disconnect with that mind that's constantly over, you know, hyper, hyper, constantly over alert. It's always on the run on the go. So it's a process. 100%, you know, like I was saying earlier, it's one of those things where I, as I've gotten older, I've learned to start to disconnect that stuff. I'm still a work in progress. I think everybody in life is, you know, that's, that's the beauty of the journey. But I, I you know, from I'm comparing myself now to what I was even just 20 years ago. It is night and day uh, as far as my mentality. Mike, you brought that up in a prior show where you were saying when you were younger, you had the drive and the ambition to like want to succeed and you're, you know, you get sucked into that conditioning type moment, you know? And then as we age, we kind of go, okay, it's time for me to get in touch with nature. It's time for me to slow this down and pull back on the throttle a little bit. I'm not saying that you have to like move away from your vision or your dreams, you know, and, and work towards those things on a daily basis, but maybe just slow down. And there's an old saying, smell the roses. Yeah. Or balance it out, right? Yeah. right? There's time to be ahead. There's time to be at peace and be okay with that. Mm -hmm. But once we go that ahead, we feel like, okay, I have to, it, has to come, it has to keep going, right? And in reality, we have to take those breaks to really assess, okay, am I doing all right? Because sometimes that's how we get to burnout. That's how we get to people losing their composure, having emotional breakdowns. There's so right. many things that cause that kind of constant being on the go. So I feel like, again, taking the time even like how i'm not sure how you guys get to disconnect with your mind but again meditation practice like like we spoke before sound healing can do the work anything mindfulness based can also help us kind of take that or create that balance between go 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 and between rest as well yeah it's hard for me to do that honestly uh you know i've been trying to disconnect a lot more but it, i mean it's just trying to figure out when and how to do it Mm -hmm. Um, I, you know, Michael B 
be a testament to me. I, I can be triggered and something I, it's something I work. Yeah. See that smile come up. I am very triggered emotionally. So it's, it's, it's very hard for me to, especially if in a heated battle moment, it's hard for me to kind of think it through and not react yeah. and, and slow yeah. down and, and yeah. stop reacting versus thinking it through. And then, you know, that nothing has to be responded to right then and there, you know? Yeah. Well, so exploring... Mike's caught me a couple of times. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but exploring the reasons too, why is it going on? Because naturally it's not normal for us to be always being triggered. Right. So it's important mm-hmm. to also observe, okay, what's going on? What makes me so emotional? Again, that comes to one of the things that I love when I'm working with people. And again, I'm, I'm specializing in trauma, working with PTSD, anxiety, depression, substance use. But working with trauma, there's a lot going on. And sometimes this can be a consequence of that too. And trauma, we're not saying something that's life-threatening or something that you observe really like tremendous crime or something really, really terrible. Even not getting what we need as children sometimes can cause that kind of neural connection. We have the top brain and the bottom brain, so to say. The top brain that we rationalize things, we, we kind of have this explicit memory, meaning we can recall facts. We have certain experiences that, yeah, it happened then, and then there was this, right? That timeline. But there's also underneath that, there's that emotional thing, the implicit memories that we don't have access from our top brain, from our prefrontal cortex. We don't have access to that. And that creates every time we experience something that can cause us, you know, emotions like fear, emotions like um anger, being scared, right? Feeling like we're not good enough even. Everything creates that underlying belief system. And every time we experience something, it's good or bad. If we're good, right? We have this uplift. We experience like we're floating. But if we're not good, our our stomach can go in a nut. Our heart begins to pump very, very fast, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of things going on, not only mentally when we get scared, but also in our physiology. And so the neurons fire, fire and wire together every time we experience that. And then we start seeing through life through the lens of that as well. And so a lot of things that seem very minor afterwards when we're older can trigger that whole entire network of experiences that we had as children. And that's why it brings up those kind of when we're not able to control how we express emotion, because it's not me as an adult, but me as a child, because I haven't processed that. So sometimes, again, we have to look, maybe there is some trace back that we can actually break down. And EMDR helps with that. That's something that I work with clients a lot with is eye movement desensitization reprocessing, which allows us to go that negative network. And again, breaking that down sometimes leads us to not experiencing being triggered so much to the things that are going on around us. So yeah, it can be a very powerful thing. But again, becoming aware of that, that's number one. Because again, it's not something, okay, now I know what it is. It's very subtle. And sometimes it's completely unrelated to anything I can think of with my rational mind. But experientially, I'm getting triggered. Not because this is a huge thing, but because there's so much in me that I haven't looked at sometimes. Yeah. The body remembers the trauma, even though the mind not be able to associate why. So you have experience, you you have reactions, you don't know why you have the reaction. Mm-hmm. That's how I feel sometimes. Like I have these reactions and I don't even know why I'm having the reaction that I'm having. Yeah. yeah a lot of us though. It's a lot mm-hmm. of us. And that's the thing that we don't even, because people can be highly functioning adults and not putting that. It's like, well, yeah, I get this sometimes, you know, right. but if you don't have that, how much better can you feel? You know, that whole another level of that. So it's, it's up to anyone. And I, I hear sometimes adults, like I've worked with clients who are, 50, 60 plus as well. I have, I work with a lot of seniors too. They're like, I don't want to dig up something that happened to me, you know, 45 years ago. And I was like, okay, I understand. But what do you feel like if you don't have those uh, 911 calls every time you have a panic attack that you can't explain? Right. You want to do, want to change that or not? Because sometimes we have to go through that in order to release that. There's a process to everything, right? But I guess it's all yeah. depends on who the person is, what they want, what their personal goals are too. And how, and how they want to reach it. And mm-hmm. when, and yeah. when their, when their time is with they're ready to reach it too, that's often yeah. the hardest part. Yeah. Because is, we can be willing, but not ready. Yeah. And then being ready, we have to get prepared <laughs> because it's not going to be comfortable. <laughs> yeah. Um, mm. So, you know, uh, in your journey towards achieving your, you know, you have said in your bio that you've, are you achieving states of fulfillment and peace? Like, what do you think that the, the, the pinnacles of those moments were like, what, what do you find in fulfillment and peace? Like, how do you get there to that level? Cause that's something that a lot of people struggle with is being fulfilled 
and then finding mm-hmm. peace with that, especially in the United States where it's always this, you know, what's the plus one, what's the next level up, you know, what, what more can I be doing? What more can I be getting? So mm-hmm. how do you get to that level of like fulfillment and then peace? Is it right? So number one is why do I want this? Is this really mm-hmm. my ideas or is something that I've read, I've seen, and I've heard because with social media now being so active, we're constantly getting influenced by everything. And when mm-hmm. I see that, I'm like, oh, you know what? We start comparing. Okay, I don't have that. Why don't I, don't I have that? And maybe if I didn't even see that, I wouldn't even think about it. So number one is I feel like we need to stop, and slow down and say, okay, why do I want to get there? Mm-hmm. What What is there for me? What's my you know reason to be searching for that or trying to achieve that? Because a lot of times we'll find that if we really not get in tune with social media, what people say, then we actually have a lot of things to be grateful for. Mm-hmm. And that kind of experience of finding gratitude, I feel like we're never grateful enough, even those who practice gratitude. Yeah. Because there's always something that we're missing or we feel like a victim or feel like we didn't get enough. If I feel, in, in general, if we just sit right now and think about all of the things we're grateful for, I mean, we're here able to do this you know, podcast right yeah. now. We're healthy, we're good. What if my liver is not working or my kidney? Right, mm-hmm. trying to get out there to get go and get that, but we don't look at what we already have, and sometimes that can bring bring a lot of peace. Because when we're grateful, we cannot be scared, we cannot be anxious. Grateful means we're lucky, fortunate, blessed, all of those things. And we, if I'm lucky, fortunate, and blessed, am I fulfilled? Do I have peace? Right, there are a lot of practices that have to be implemented. It's not just one thing. Mm-hmm. meditation is definitely one of those things that led me to understand who we are because the moment we understand who we are we understand that we're cool, cool and complete and honestly we don't need anything else and difference between want and a need is also another thing sometimes we place those needs in something that i just want like i right. want to get that car okay do you have money for that car are you able to afford it right now mm-hmm. well no okay do you need it well i have a car okay so it's not a need right now you don't need a car you want it Right. Right. Yeah. And why do you want it? Why well, I want it because I saw it with my neighbor. My neighbor got a new car. Now I want. Why did they have it and I don't? Right. Yeah. So what's the reason behind it? I feel like we're we get trapped by our minds and what society provides for us. And this country, you know, being so individualistic, sometimes we have to fight to get there. Yeah, it's yeah. funny that you brought up the car because oftentimes, you know, when it comes to cars, it's not the actual car; it's what the car represents. You know, mm-hmm. if you see someone driving an expensive car you don't really notice the person. You never really notice the person driving the vehicle. You just notice what the vehicle represents. So if it's a very expensive car, your mind on it goes to, Oh, there's someone that's in control of their life. There's someone in power. You know, there's somebody that can make, you know, buy big ticket items and not worry about it. They probably don't have a lot of stress. You start building all these other desires Mm -hmm. around what the car symbolizes. And it's not the car itself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And, and I think that when you can make that connection, it makes a huge difference on that purchasing impulse. When you go, okay, you know, what is it that is really the desire? Because it's not – usually it's not the car because I know from personal experience, you know, when you get the car that you've wanted, in a mm-hmm. couple of days it gets old and all that all that awesomeness wears off. And then yeah. you're still the exact same person you were the day before you bought it, like nothing Mm -hmm. changes, you know, now you just have a nicer status symbol and other people might notice it, but they're not noticing you. They're noticing the car. You know, you don't Mm -hmm. very rarely does, does the person ever go, Oh, I wonder who's driving that. Or, you know, they're like, Ooh, that's a really cool car. You know, they're not Mm -hmm. like, I wonder who he is or what he's about or anything of that nature. I mean, unless you're a celebrity, but then it's more for your celebrity status, not necessarily you as an individual. Because mm-hmm. that's also something, you know, they they fall in love with the character that you play on a movie or, you know, the music that you play or not the actual individual that you are, you know, not your whole self. So it's really fascinating that you brought mm-hmm. that up. Yeah. Um, and also another point, too, that when we're talking even about a car, we don't really want a car. We want the yeah. feeling when I have that car. Mm-hmm. Right. And the status, yeah. everything that else comes with that. But I'm, I'm going to feel like I'm that if I have yeah. it. And it's not the car that makes me feel like that. It's my own mind, right? It's just believing mm-hmm. that, okay, now I'm this you know, cool guy or gal and everything's good. Now I have this vehicle yeah. again in a few days. It's already old and mm-hmm. we need a new thing because change is everything that we have to strive for is change. But change not in the status, I feel like. Change in our mentality, how we think and what we think 
and how we act as a result of it too. Yeah. Um, so one of the things I was, I was interested in um, was the uh, sound healing therapy that you'd mm -hmm. mentioned. Um, Cause that's something that I think, I know it's been around for an incredibly long time, but it seems to be becoming more, I don't know if mainstream is the right word, but there's been more awareness to it lately. At mm -hmm. least I feel like there has been um, through different, you know, even using music for different techniques. But so did you want to go a little bit into the uh, sound bath, you know, or oh, sound, yeah. sound healing therapy and what yeah. benefits Absolutely. it can bring? Absolutely. So to start, like the starting point is we all have that intuition about what's going on around us with other people, with ourselves, everything in our body vibrates, every single cell in our, our body vibrates. If something is not okay, if I get sick, whether it's physical or not, if I overthink sometimes, you know, when you're stressing too much, you get a headache, right? So we mm -hmm. have some representations of our emotions go into our physical thing. But also that place that we have experienced that pain or illness, it doesn't vibrate coherently with the entire body because we have a perfect vibration. When we're good, it's a perfect vibration. Something goes off, the vibration is not coherent everywhere. So it has one spot that it starts to crackle a little bit. And just like we spoke before about people and energy, when people come in and you can sense them, right? Yes, we can sense when people are either not doing well or they're doing well. Sometimes we look at a person, we just feel drawn to them naturally. And they didn't do anything. They're not looking anything special, but we just feel it, right? And the same with negative one. We see someone and we're like, you know what? I don't want to want to be next to that person. I want to just mm -hmm. stay away. And so that's what happens too when we are not addressing some issues that we have inside and that place that may be incoherent right now as far as how it vibrates. People can also sense into that and we will probably attract similar energies as well. What sound healing offers, especially if we do it with a closed, in a closed room, the sounds that are in different hertz, again, different instruments have different type of frequency. But if you play them in a closed room, that the sound bounces off the walls and penetrates the body. So what it does, it shifts that vibration that we have, which, which is incoherent, making it much more mellow and softer. I've done this practice a lot and actually in rehabs as well and did that for people in detox going through severe withdrawal symptoms. I've done it with people in PHP, IOP, but everybody, they were able to get such benefits from that because even though they had some pains inside, people could not be able to fall asleep. They had issues with different parts of their bodies too, shoulder pain, back pain. After that, not only people would be snoring in the group room, and I would be completely fine with that because I think that's what they need. Sometimes we don't get what we want, but we get what we need. And sometimes right. people sleep, right? So the person will be sleeping. Some people report that after they had this class, they're not experiencing the pain in the shoulder anymore or in the back. What happens does because it shifts that vibration, it allows the body to also start healing in itself because, again, frequencies are very powerful. And they're right. able to help us reduce tension through that shift, through that wave of the sound. So it's a very powerful technique mm -hmm. to use. In yeah. A lot of, yeah. Yeah. I found that interesting because like, um, you know, cats, when they purr, they resonate at a frequency that's mm -hmm. actually been scientifically proven to mend bones um, mm -hmm. because of the, the frequency range. So I thought that was really interesting. And, you know, as I think well, we, we talked before, my, my wife has recently gotten into the sound bath healing mm -hmm. therapy and doing that as a uh, practice. Um, and the sad part is, is that she's gotten some backlash from like the Christian community because they don't realize they're like, oh, that's chanting and like, you know, like pagan and it has absolutely nothing to do with that. Yeah. You know, it's so narrow minded people like they need to open their mind and be like, it's part of just part of an environment and there's no, yeah. there, there's no connotation to it, you know, and music's been used absolutely. throughout all forms of religion, you know, as, mm -hmm. as a healing and, you know, and getting in touch with your spirituality. So you know, it's, well, just, it's such a fascinating well, field. Let's send that Christian community another message. If they still <laughs> celebrate birthday parties with the cake, with the candles, when they yeah. sing around it and blow it, that's a witchcraft, okay? Yeah, so anybody who says that, if they're doing that, good luck. Now yeah, they have something exactly. to think about, okay? Well, listen, I'm yeah, with you on that, choose. Alyssa. As well. yeah. I'm with you on that, Alyssa, too, as well. It's like, you know, hey, just before you criticize, do some homework. <laughs> you know, yeah. to me, that's yeah. just how I feel about things. It's just like do a little homework because there's a lot of practices that come back from different religions and different uh, things in time. And people don't mm -hmm. do the research on it, but we're practicing them as of today, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And that shows you again, right? There is this big difference between religion and spirituality. Mm -hmm. A truly spiritual person, those who are fulfilled, who are at peace, who are practicing whatever they do and they live in their own thing. 
they will support other people doing whatever they yeah. want, especially if you do your, again, research and seeing, okay, mm-hmm. what's the benefits of that? I mean, everybody's listening to classical music. Why? Because mm-hmm. it's also healing. It's the mm-hmm. same thing. You're going for that or you're going for this. different methods, different way how it affects you, yet it's the same kind of result. Like you're still getting into that trance state or an alpha state, right? We have mm-hmm. different brain waves that we function under. And so classical music, uh, music can get us into this alpha state, which is very creative and very pure and connected to our higher self too. So yeah, the more we do stuff, again, some people may not like it and that's okay. It's yeah. a per- it should be personal choice, not personal something choice. that you will label or good or bad. But why not yeah. even it a try? Just try it for yourself and see how you do it, how mm-hmm. you like it. Just see how your body reacts to it. But try it a few times. Didn't work. Okay, good. You have, you've tried it. You said, not, not for me. Okay. I always like to say it's kind of like when you know you go out to eat. You know, you should try it. See if you like it. You may and may yeah. not like that food. You may not like that dish. But you know, at least you <laughs> tried it and said, "Hey, that's you know, that's, the, that's the devil talking." No, just <laughs> <laughs> that devil, of course, of course, devil is my stomach. Like that that devil is my stomach. It's like constantly it. talking. It's constantly talking to me. I'm like, no, stop. I was like, you're a demon. But that, that's, um, that, that's <laughs> obesity and type two diabetes <laughs> talking. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Um, oh man so yeah i i guess I, I i i guess my next question is is um on just men's mental health in general so would you say that that's something um men would get into mike i mean did you did you do that therapy with uh that your wife is doing the sound bath therapy um yes she she yeah she came home and like, <laughs> she's like on me. she's which, about to call which, you out which is you know <laughs> it was uh it, it's kind of weird being the test test dummy sometimes, you know, because right. like practicing, you know, it's like, <laughs> please get the frequency right because I don't want to be coming. I don't want to leave worse than how I came in. <laughs> but I have no, but I have actually no, but I've actually done a full sound bath massage therapy where they put the singing bowls, um, you know, on your stomach and they played it mm-hmm. and then they've done it, um, the chalices. And uh, I can tell you um, going in, I felt relaxed, mm-hmm. but when I came out, it was a totally different level of relaxation. Like I felt like my, uh, uh, my body was relaxed. Like my mm-hmm. mind going into it was relaxed. I wasn't in a panic state, but obviously I was carrying tension throughout my body in different areas. Mm-hmm. Um, and those areas were gone. And it was yeah. interesting because, you know, they pinpointed areas that I had had, you know, surgeries on or past traumas. And they said, oh, this area is really resonating, you know, differently. And then they 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 did um, the sound bath for that frequency in that area. And then my body felt less mm-hmm. tense, um, mm-hmm. you know, and but I choose to believe in it, too. So Absolutely. that's I know that's a big factor, too, because if you don't yeah. if you, the mind is yeah. so powerful, you can you can be given life saving drugs. And if you don't believe in them, you can still die, you know. Absolutely. Vice versa, you can be given a placebo, and if you believe in it, you can live. Absolutely, so it's yeah. it comes down Absolutely. to your mind plays such a strong power um, in it's, that. So. It's funny you say that, Mike, because like the first time I went in and had Tracy do some of that bowls and, and, and the sound stuff on me, at, at first, my first reaction was, oh my God, this is so weird. Uh, bullshit. <laughs> I mean, I did. I, I'll be honest with you. As a guy, I was like going, oh my God, really? I was like, these belts. And then, then about the second or third time, I was like, Okay, I'm kind of digging this a little bit. You know what I mean? And my mindset shift. I tried to go in there and go, okay, listen, because I always like to joke around. That's just what I do. I'm 90% of the time, I'm never serious. But uh, I was like, okay, I'm going to take this to another level. And I was going to say, I actually enjoyed it the third time I went, you know. So it was a different just experience. Sometimes getting out of your head. And actually, we, I don't think we do that a lot because every time when we kind of think about life or everything, we're up here. We're somewhere in that space that's right on top of our head and we're spiraling because there's so many things. We're not practicing being here now. Like even right now, right? We're here. But if I think about my partner, I think about my job, right? It's going to be so much and I can go on a tangent with that in my head. But in reality, I'm ignoring what's going on inside of me right now. And even when I'm thinking about it, I'm probably going to start getting tense. So the only way to not judge something like the new practice that we're starting you just allow yourself to be present with that rather than think about how it's affecting you. Just try to disconnect from the mind. That can be a very good kind of supplemental way if we're trying to get into meditation because the sounds are able to help you to get in tune with your body a little more and come down from your mind, like taking that elevator. And that can be somatic therapy too. I think for a lot of men, 
the pressures of today again and so many roles that they play and the stigma that they carry there's so much going on men are prohibited from crying they cannot you know not be a provider there within the family there's a lot of pressure at many different levels how they interact with other people all the masculinity you know and i feel like it's it's just too much to carry and sometimes disconnecting from it and saying you know what let me just be let me just be with myself and see what i have internally and somatic therapy can work very well too is taking that elevator down from your head from your mind down into your body and say okay what's going on now? i'm just listening to your body too the body also has consciousness I mean, it's healing itself by itself. We don't do anything. It has mm-hmm. this innate kind of tendencies for self-healing. So when I listen to that to help us manage the emotions as well and our mind as well, we're one system. We don't have to try to treat every part differently or separately. We just have to come inside sometimes and listen, okay, what's going on with me? Just taking, taking check-ins and also giving yourself a break from thinking into being. You know, I feel like that's a really powerful practice, even though, again, they're like, ah, it sounds so weird. It's really not. And speaking of that placebo effect, I mean, our mind can help us heal the body too, right? So there's so many aspects of it. And if we allow ourselves to open up that box, because our core beliefs are never something we're born with. Everything, me, you, you, everything, everything we know today, it's, we, we've learned all of it. Mm-hmm. There is nothing that's really, yeah, we have ideas, but all of the core, core beliefs about the world, ourselves, and everything else, it's all been influenced. It's all been yeah, kind of taught in the environment. Us. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And so understanding that whatever I think of or whatever I want to, I'm about to judge just comes from something that I've learned. It's not even, I don't even may not think about it really. But if I learn myself outside of my mind, that energy, there's something magical that happens. And that's how we get there. It's again, through different practices, whether it's meditation, mindfulness, whether it's prayer, whether it's just sitting with yourself, journaling, gratitude list, um, again, sound healing. We have light machine. I have Pandora Star. It's light, a light deep trans meditation device too that gives you such a whiplash that you cannot be in your mind. You will be experiencing like a psychedelic trip without having to use anything, right? So there's so many ways that we can learn what we are without the mind. But I feel like we're not often listening or willing to dedicate time to it. And it's so important. Our daily routine, just like you gentlemen described, right? How like walking and cold plunges, great. I wish all of the people would be following something like this because we have to have routine for ourselves. It's a yeah. must. Because if we don't, imagine those people who are in corporate settings, who are like, you know, very, very intense with their environment, and then they don't have time to unwind. You're constantly on this. You don't have, you don't give yourself a break. How can you hear what you need? You know, you got to listen to yourself, but for that, you need to take time. And again, if we're not taking care of that, then we're not available for the job we have for our families, for the people who we care about. When I say, well, I have to put the needs of others before me. Okay, all right. So they're getting a very injured version of you, unhealed version of you. Is that the best you can provide? Mm-hmm. Probably not. And there's a book, The Myth, Myth of Normal by Gabriel Maté, the um, MD. Powerful, powerful book. And he talks a lot about how even That's people who are overly nice are likely to develop, let's say, autoimmune disease or develop some sort of cancer. We got to, we got to, there's so many things that now being discovered about how our personalities can affect even our health, like autoimmune diseases and again, even cancer. So learning about that and learning what we need, learning that, you know what, I have to prioritize myself so that I'm better for everybody else in my life and all of the projects that I'm in. Because otherwise I'm irritable. It's too much for me. I don't want to interact. I, I want to escape. And we probably turn to very unhealthy coping skills like, drinking too much or being on the phone too much or whatever you know people have a lot of different ways so it's so important to have that routine and start scheduling things out and trying new things we have to bring ourselves to new environments to experience ourselves because if we're functioning in the same kind of cycle there's no way i love this quote we can't solve a problem with the same mind that created it to solve a problem we have to get a different mind and if I know what I know, how can I know anything else? So I'm going to call for support from this person who is already on the on the verge of a breakout or breakdown, right? And so what kind of support I can get from that person? Probably nothing good, right? But for no. that, again, we either need some outside source or a good book or a new routine, something that will help us to think differently. Something to break the cycle. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Well said. So um, I had a question because uh, you mentioned the light therapy that can put you on a psychedelic um, mm-hmm. trip um, without medication. But 
how do you feel about like ayahuasca? Because that's something that I've always wanted to ask that same question. Because I've had <laughs> friends that have done that, and they've said it was a very spiritual awakening for them. Um, yeah. yeah. How do you feel yeah. about psychedelic drugs? I guess you know, or I've, not I've, or, or na- na- natural remedies. I've been uh, with my mother ayahuasca. I've been on this journey since 2017, and it's mm. been a lot for me. I've actually. It helped me a lot with my PTSD that I've had, mm-hmm. and I was in a cycle too. And so I've studied with shamans as well. That's how it opened me up to sound healing and all of the other methods. Because again, it's not, we're always thinking that box. And that was something that was very powerful. I'm integrating people who are going through psychedelic journeys as well. I'm big in supporting people who are on this journey right now with ayahuasca mm-hmm. because I believe in it's yeah. a beautiful medicine. It is not for everybody, mm-hmm. right? And it's probably not going to be benefiting for certain individuals, but still, it's a powerful tool if anybody feels that they're compelled to try it with a good intention. You have to have a really good intention and reason mm-hmm. why you're doing that, because we're not going for drinking, you know, cold medicine if we're not sick, right? If right. we're sick, we're going for that support, and that comes for any type of unconventional methods, mushrooms, mm-hmm. and all the other stuff. I don't like when people do that in a party settings or just to hang out. No, that's a deep deep work that you have to go through it helps you to rewire yourself so if you're using that but doing the same thing nothing is going to happen because your mind is stronger than anything else you're the strongest mm-hmm. force in your life and so if you don't believe in it if you have some intentions that I'm, i just want a mystical experience i want to you're coming here to heal this is not a party drug right <laughs> right yeah. it's not not something that you can do and plus again uh, gun i don't know it's probably over 90 or 100 uh, times that I've, I've done ayahuasca myself because it's been a oh, journey wow. for me. But yeah. you don't need to do, the more you do it, the less you need of the medicine, number one. Mm-hmm. And then you take longer time. I'm going for six, seven, eight months without doing that right now. But beginning was very rough because it was calling me to do some deep work. And so I highly recommend for those people who want to try it. I feel it's a powerful tool, especially if we need to break that tough shell that we got. You know, mm-hmm. if you need to break through, you're struggling, you don't have time, just go and try, you know, prepare yourself for this experience because it's really powerful. But doing it with the right practitioner too. Because mm-hmm. right now it's too many people start doing that as a fun kind of thing. They don't maintain the proper dieting for that. They're not respecting the medicine as they should. So I feel like some emphasis has to be made on how to get ready for that and how to prepare for it. such a deep yeah. experience. Yeah, that's what I've heard about it is uh, mm-hmm. that it's, you, you, it's definitely the you have to follow the ritual to get the benefit, yeah, you know, absolutely. if you deviate from it, then you can obviously have, you know, yeah. side effects. Um, you know, yes. cause I've had, you know, like my friend, he went through it and it was a very, very spiritual awakening for him. But then there was okay. people that were there with him that were having like the worst times of their lives. It seemed like, um, and a lot of that, I think that's because they went in with the wrong mindset or they didn't properly prepare themselves. Um, mm-hmm. so it's, it's just something interesting yeah. that, you know, I've, definitely been looking into um i but just haven't also, pulled the trigger yeah, yet <laughs> you definitely should it's a beautiful again yeah. whenever you feel like it you cannot rush it you cannot push right. it you have to be ready and you have to know okay i was going there with the mindset of okay I'm like i know i'm struggling i got off of my medication i was on and it was a miraculous experience how that happened mm-hmm. but anyway so I got off of it, um, and when I was driving there, I was like, okay, I was struggling. I was like, okay, I know it's not going to work. <laughs> I was mm-hmm. like, but I want to try it, and then I go back home, and I'm going to go back on my meds. That was my mindset yeah. because, again, I was mm-hmm. struggling a lot. And so going there after I had done, it was three ceremonies back-to-back on the weekend. And after it was Friday when I was going there and Sunday when I was done, I came back. I was like, oh, my God, I felt you get the knowing from that if you allow yourself. And it was yeah. terrifying. The whole process was very bad in the beginning. The first ceremony, I was like, okay, I think I got everything I needed. It was The message was nothing matters. So I was like, okay, nothing from my past really matters. Okay, good. I got to go home. I'm freaking tired. And then something shifts as you continue to connect with other people, right? Again, you're in a new environment. You open yeah. up conversations. You're not shutting down. And then something started changing in me because, again, we're also social creatures. We have to have that support system. We have to have new interactions and new experiences. We learn from, from people and projects. And people, it's a big part of our lives. And another lady who was there for the first time, she actually left pretty quickly. So after the three ceremonies, I was like, I'm never going on medications ever again. I'm like, There's no way I'm going. <laughs> so imagine a difference from Wednesday to Sunday, right? It, yeah. Just one day, one day. 
And I was like, me on Medicaid? Never again. I'm like, oh my God, we're all a part of the Jesus. I felt the Christ energy. And again, I'm not talking about religious. You yeah. know, I, I, I respect and love Jesus as a teacher. He was a great teacher. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of things that he said that were very important for us to understand, I think. Mm-hmm. and But right. I felt how we all are that. We all have that wisdom of what you know he was teaching. It was such a beautiful experience. It was a knowing. It was not the knowledge. It was the knowing and the knowing mm-hmm. within, within your entire body. Not just like, okay, you know, some people can cite a Bible, but it actually doesn't mean they experience God. So right. we have to remember that. We can cite a thing or we can think or understand, but it's a knowing that we get when, when we really get it, the essence of that understanding. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's so powerful. Um, mm-hmm. I think you said something really good there too uh, earlier on when you started talking about it was – be in an environment where it's not in a party setting and, you know, oh, and that, and that, and got, you see so many people take these psychedelics and things like that in these party settings. And they have like the worst, I mean, even from the sixties, people taking acid in the seventies, you know, and stuff like that. It was, yeah. they'd have these worst experiences with that stuff. Mm-hmm. And, and so you really, I started thinking about it when you were uh, talking about it. it was just like, yeah, man, because every time I hear people talk, it's usually when they have something bad, it's usually because they're in those settings and not in a controlled environment where they are actually yeah. opening up, you know, spiritually yeah. to it. Yeah. So, yeah, I call it a divine slap, you know, when we do something <laughs> correctly, when we abuse something and right. we abuse like Delic, like we get a divine slap in there. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Mike, yeah. I'd love to divine slap you a few times. Just saying. <laughs> you can try. You have, to, you have to get a stool to step up, though. Yeah, I'm very short. So he makes fun of my height all the time. I'm five six. No, he's, so only, he's, like, always... he's only like yeah, a couple inches shorter than me. But it's just funny. <laughs> I walk next yeah. to him. I look like a little, like his little brother, old little brother. Um, <sighs> yeah, no, but so anyway, um, um, Mike, you you got some other some other things you want to discuss or uh, I think we've actually covered quite a bit for everybody yeah. to uh, digest. Um, do you have any references or resources that they could reach out to you or if they yeah, would like to get absolutely. more information about your services and things that you offer? Absolutely. I have um, anybody who's interested in therapy. Um, they can find me at Lisa Gracheva. They can find me on Google. Actually I have my listing there at psychology today. I have hmm. social media, I have Instagram and uh, Facebook. If anybody wants to reach out there, I can connect hmm. to. I do. Um, I'm starting a soon a group also for trauma, kind of specializing in trauma support group for people. So that's going to be something if people want to get involved. Okay. Yeah, definitely. I'd le- definitely like to have you back on when we start digging in a little bit more into a men's mental health as a as a as a complete subject, um, mm-hmm. you know, as well. So I'd definitely love to have you back on. Uh, but with that, thank you so much for coming on the show today. We really appreciate you uh, taking the time out of your busy schedule because I know you're busy. Mm-hmm. So uh, doing it. Um, yeah. So, guys, don't forget, head over to the dot com where you can find all of our socials and you can follow us there. You can also we'll put a link up to um, Alyssa's profiles, too, as well. Yep. So you can go check out her and follow her, too, as well, and get some great advice. Uh, Mikey, got anything before we get out of here? Hey, I just want everybody to have a great day and, uh, you know, get in touch with your inner self. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Thank you so much, guys. And you guys have a fantastic day and we will catch you on the flip side. Thank you, Alyssa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Deuces. <laughs>